Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. This is magic. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. War of the words, data versus data. Computers. Computers can be used to do lots of stuff. We use them to communicate, we use them to get information, and we use them to entertain ourselves with things like games and videos. One of the most powerful uses of computers, though, is to work with data. Oh, excuse me, Steve, but the word, I do believe it's pronounced data. Oh, no, it's not. Steve's correct. <laughs> that word is pronounced data. Rusty. Are you kidding me? It's pronounced data, Rusty. Obviously, you've had your head in the dirt too long. It's called data. Oh, no, it's data. 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 Data! Well, guys, data! Guys, 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 excuse me, but the truth is, either pronunciation is correct. You can pronounce the word data oh. or data. I knew it! The more commonly used pronunciation is data. So for today's show, we'll be using the pronunciation data. Data is a set of information. If you ask all of your friends their favorite games, you are collecting data. If you make a list of all of your friends' birthdays, you're collecting data. <laughs> data, it's just information. Sometimes people collect really large sets of data. Sets that are so large, writing them down on one piece of paper just doesn't work. Imagine if you asked all of the kids at your school what their favorite games are. That's a huge set of data. When data is collected and stored in a computer, we call that a database. Your school has a database with information about every student. The school's database has your birthday and your address. The school's database has your middle name, uh, your grades from last year, and the year before that. Databases in a computer can store a lot of information. Think about how many books there are in your school library. Your librarian has a database to help manage all of that information. That database has information about every single book in the library. Titles, genres, number of pages, even a picture of the cover. <laughs> Lots of information. You are even in that database. The librarian knows what books you have checked out now and books you've checked out in the past. Librarians use different methods to collect data. Some data is collected by using a keyboard, hand inputting the data. But other times, the data is entered using a barcode reader or even a touchpad. 
Also, the librarian can enter the data, or you can do this if there's a self-serve checkout station. It goes into the database, stored on the computer, or in the cloud. The cloud isn't really a cloud like those you see in the sky. When we say the cloud, we mean other computers on the internet that store our data. As data is put into the database, it goes into what is called a table. If you printed it out, a table looks like a big grid. Each row is a separate record, and each column has a name. Here's an example table with just one book in it. Here's an example table with three books in it. Now, imagine a table with a row for every book in your library. It would be huge! Uh. One reason computers are so valuable to us, they allow us to work with very, very large amounts of data. Okay, so we have a large amount of data. What can we do with it? We can, of course, use the database for simple information. Want to know if your library has a certain book? Just check the database. Do you want to know what books you've already checked out? Again, just check the database. Sometimes, though, we have questions that go well beyond just asking for simple information. That means that the answer the database gives us might be difficult to understand. In order to make it easier to understand, we can look at the data as a picture. Instead of words or numbers, we can use pictures commonly called graphs or graphics. Bar graphs and pie charts are two common types of graphics that computers can easily create. This is called data visualization. It's sometimes easier to understand complex data when it's been made into a picture. Here's an example of what that might look like. Imagine that your library checks out four kinds of books, nonfiction, sports, fiction, and fantasy. You want to know how many of each kind was checked out. You ask the computer for a report, and here's what you get. You can see the numbers, but seeing the data graphically might give you a clearer understanding of it. This is called a pie chart. See? It kind of looks like a pie. And it helps us understand the difference between the numbers. The biggest piece of the pie is for non-fiction books. The smallest piece is for sports books. The other two pieces, fiction and fantasy, are about the same size. We can use this to get an idea of how many of each kind of book gets checked out. Again, this is called data visualization. This is seeing the numbers in a new way that might be easier to understand. Computers allow us to work with data in other ways as well. We can use computers to create models and simulations. Models and simulations are tools that use data to help us see what might happen if some of our data changes. Let's say that our data shows that fourth graders like to check out books about computers from the library. We know there are 100 fourth graders and they've checked out 147 books. A model lets us see what happens if all of a sudden we had 134th graders at the school and they all checked out the same number of books as their classmates. By changing the 100 to 130, we can see that the 147 would grow to 190. Answering questions like this with computers usually involves five steps. Collecting data for your database, organizing your data, oftentimes in tables, graphing your data so it's easier to understand, analyzing it or studying it to learn what it tells you, and publishing your results to share with other people. Models and simulations are used for all sorts of things. Here are some ways that we use computer simulations and models. We use computer simulations to forecast the weather. We use computer models to test the design of buildings and other structures before we build them. And we use computer simulations for projects as big as traveling to Mars. We want to make sure things work before we put astronauts in space. In today's world, we've got a lot of information. Fortunately, we have computers to help us make sense of all of that information, that data. Oh, and it's perfectly okay if you want to say data. Data. Successful people are responsible people. Being responsible means you keep your commitments. If you say you're going to do something, you just do it. You said you would, so you do. That's responsible. 
It means you know what is expected and don't need to be told to do it. If you're expected to brush your teeth before you go to bed at night, you just do it without having to be reminded. You just do it. That's, that's responsible. It means you do not make excuses. You were supposed to sharpen all of the class pencils this morning when you got to school, but you forgot to do it. When you were asked why you did not sharpen them, you answered, it's not my fault. No one reminded me. No, it is your fault. Successful people are responsible people. Responsibility is the stepping stone to all great success. You can do it. I know you can. Major funding provided by Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires, Lions HR, Northwest Alabama RCD, Keep Alabama Beautiful, Derek Thornton, Alabama Soil and Water Conservation Committee, and Lawrence County Soil and Water Conservation District. Steve Trash Science is available online at stevetrash.com. Mm -hmm.